Hi, this is video tutorial number 22 using text with the LCD object. Uh, let's just start with a clean slate on this one and get an LCD up here so we can print uh, type the letter N, type LCD in it, and there it is. And now we'll just go right to the help file. Why bother even messing around? Unlock your help file. Am I going too fast today? I am zooming right along here. So let's grab this stuff and copy it. We're going to close our help window. We'll just delete that one and say stick this in here. Now we essentially have the LCD file, uh, help file, on text in here for ourselves. And um, that's awesome. I'm just going to leaving out the key object up here I, I selected everything else so that I can just sort of move it down a little bit because I want to make some space here um, let's just start with the LCD and I'll, I'll get to that in a minute so lock your patcher and you'll notice if you come on over here as shown before you can scribble just fine in this patcher and wherever you click your mouse if you start typing Oh my goodness, that's small. Zoom in. I mean, it's... I realize you're watching a movie, but this is even distorted in my, in my view. If you click here, you can... Right? Um, wherever you click, it will... You don't have to type that. You can click typing, and it types right off the page. It's of nominal usefulness, and you can suddenly change the font, too, by sending it this message and I'm going to click over here and type ASDF as I like to do with my left hand um, okay uh, fantastic um, if that's all you want to do but uh, we usually like to make our things a little bit more useful so here's a, a couple things we can do very quickly one of them is this um, nonsense of of they've given us 20 different ways to kind of change the font around in this silly thing here why don't we make it um, unlock it I'm gonna move this up and out of the way let's change this so that it's actually something that's useful to us and we'll do that by changing it to string one and string two that's the dollar sign one and the dollar sign two and um, I like the way these things look so I'm just gonna copy it and stick that up here and now oh, what the heck why not do it with two of them okay and what we're gonna do is type our um, type fonts in this one and then we'll type some numbers in this one. I know we could just use a num uh, we could just use a number box. Oh, let's just use a number box. There we go. I a number box. Okay. And then, in order to get this to come down and go into here, our last object before we go into here will have to be a pack object. Type the letter N. Type pack. Here's a new one. Type S is for symbol so that it knows it's handling a symbol and then type a zero so it knows it's handling an integer now these things coming through here will be the symbol which we'll have up here as the name of the font and the number being the size of the font and they will end up being string one and string two and that'll get shuffled over there okay in order to get to the that point we need to always have them uh, burst in there together so let's type another new object and we'll type Bondo we're gonna do two uh, messages together and then what we're gonna do if you see down here list flag symbol you use the letter N as an argument just type N and now Bondo will understand that it's got to receive 
it's just going to treat these things not like their numbers but like their messages so this one which is the text message that will be coming out of here will be our first message and it will be the first one in pack and then the number here which will be our font size is going to come in as the second message um, the reason I use Bondo for this is because in order for this message to work, it needs both of these numbers sent in at the same time. And the only and Bondo, if you put anything in, it will deliver the last two things that it's had, the two messages that it has stored in it. So when we change this, it'll send out both messages. If we change this, it'll send out both messages. So that way we always get a, a complete message out to the LCD. Okay? And we're going to click on our U menu object in case you were wondering what that was called. We're going to go over here to the inspector and scroll down here. Is my thing just off the page here? There we go. Okay. I can't really get a very good view of it. Okay. Um, over here, items. Oops, there, I'm going off the page already. we see menu items and we're going to edit them and we're going to this is going to be fun because I actually don't know what fonts it has so we can assume it has Arial we can probably guess it might have times um, Helvetica is always a good one nice to have uh, uh, Palatino sure why not uh, Comic, I don't know. Um, and what's that one uh, I like? Uh, Lucida, let's try it. I don't know if all of these will work or not. They're just all different type fonts. Um, just trying to guess what it might have in this repertoire. So now those will all be in our little um, U menu here. So if we lock our patch. If we click here and then lock our patcher, we'll see them all. Arial, Times, Helvetica, Palatino, Comic, Lucida. Um, we're going to click on the max window here so that when we do hit and uh, a bad command, we'll know it. Well, let's make this a reasonable type font for this window. Let's just say 20, and we'll make this Arial. Uh, clear the window and see how our typing goes. I'm going to click right here and then hit ASDF. Look at that. ASDF, what if I change the size? Is it actually working? 37. Oh yes it is. Uh, even bigger. 65. Woo! Alright, we'll clear that. Let's see how we did with our type fonts. Uh, uh, we'll just go for comic. See if it is willing. Hmm. I don't know if that looks like comic or not. How about times? Oh yeah, it, it can do times. And uh, Helvetica down here. That does not look anything like Helvetica. It's... Oh no, actually, maybe, uh, tough call. Yeah, it is Helvetica, what do you know? Uh, Lucida. I'm going to clear it for Lucida here. And it's not saying that it doesn't recognize the fonts. That looks pretty similar to something else. Well, I'm sure uh, we could look up the fonts that uh, Max has loaded into it, but at least we have a couple different fonts that we can experiment with here. Times worked pretty well. Yeah. That gives you a nice old feeling of a typewriter, doesn't it? So, um, this bit of stuff up here seems to be working rather well, so why not just encapsulate it, right? Whoops, didn't unlock my... There we go, shift Control e encapsulated, patcher, font, uh, maker. There we go. And I uh, will figure out some of those later. But we can put this here and 
tell it to route its patch cord if we can ever. Come on. There we go. Great. Um, so that's a nice thing to be able to do. Um, and just as long as we're. Um, I think some of the other things that would be nice to do would be to able to be uh, to type here. Maybe that would also be a very good thing to do. Um, you notice this message here gives us a lot of clues what we can do. Move to 4040 write hello slash baby. Okay, what happens if we click on that? It goes to 4040 and it writes hello baby. Notice it wrote it in times. Let's clear that and make this real small again and change it to Arial and tell it to do it again. There we go. So it's doing right about here's 4040. Um, I just wanted to show you another very nice, whoops, I always forget, I always think I'm selecting things when I'm when I'm doing that. A good message to be able to send the LCD actually let's let's look at the messages that come out of the LCD first. Let me get some mess messages here and see what they are saying. Alright, so if we're zooming around in here, we can see that if we're holding the mouse down, we get a 1 down here, and when I just let up on it, you get a 0, and the mouse position wherever you're scrolling is here. Okay? And then it goes back to 0. There's no idle mouse reporting because we would have to send it a message that said idle 1. That enables idle mouse reporting. This is just in case you wanted to know. Okay, so now if we send it that message, we get those numbers down there. I'll just zoom in there. There, you can see that. And then if I click down, active mouse reporting, idle mouse reporting. Okay, great. Now let's just click that. Okay this dump out box if we send the message m uh, get um, and then size block your patcher and click on it and you get this message which is size 260 218 fantastic um, and if you wanted to also know where the pen is while you're typing unlock your patcher again you can send it this message which is get pen L O C get pen lock get whoops I typed I typed it in a message there get pen lock it's just too helpful sometimes there we go okay and if we click here, 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 and then click on that. It says the pen location is 16073. And now I'll do this. Again. Oh, I can't get my, can't hit the button. There we go. 210173. So those could be useful things to know if one wanted to make a sort of typing system here. And um, how we would do that 
is just very quickly for those of you who love this kind of thing um, you would type a new object and say route and then those are the things you the the terms that are coming through which will be either size or pen location um, see that word says pen location now this one says pen location if size comes out of here and into here then si then its numbers will come out here and they would have to be unpacked so we'd need a new unpack uh, zero space zero and then I, I I, I. Right. And I'm just going to pull this out so that we can make two of those. There. And now you can say get pen size, click, and it's 260 over 218. And you can say, I'm sorry, get size is how big the uh, LCD is. Get the pen location at 234, 173. That's interesting to know because if you are down here with your pen, down in this little tiny corner, you want to know that your pen location, which is 255, 215, is not bigger than the size of your LCD, which is luckily 260, 218. You can see how close it's getting there, right? So this is a good way that you can control things on your LCD. You'll notice if I unlock it and change the size, of the LCD and then lock it again. Now I say get the size and now it's only 206 by 175 and we'll just mouse down to this very corner again here and say get pen location and it's 201, 171 so we were four, five and four pixels inside of that corner. Useful, huh? So um, in the very next video, um, just to keep these things in a manageable size, I will show you how to make the typewriter tool using this information. Not that it's so important to make a typewriter tool, but it will uh, give you an idea of how to use the LCD size and keep scaling that so that you can work with it. But for now, uh, that's it. We uh, changed our font sizes and font types and learned how to get information out of the LCD and I will be back with 22A.